Hello, my name is Thomas Gary from the Medical University of Graz, Austria. Together with my co-worker Reinhard Lagam, we tweeted an interesting case, uh, which you can see in the next minutes. Uh, we treated a 51-year-old patient that was immunized with ChatOx1 vaccination uh, 11 days before uh, she was admitted to our emergency department with massive dyspnea and cough for three days. As you can see here in the CT scan, she was suffering a central pulmonary embolism, which is detectable uh, with the two errors you see. What was the reason for this central pulmonary embolism? It was a massive carbal vein thrombosis. Um, we figured out in the MRI. The patient got an initial laboratory workup, as you can see in this figure. We show here the results of the laboratory testing. She showed initially a very severe thrombocytopenia with just 37,000 of uh, platelets and together with a massively elevated D-dimer level. In uh, the following uh, days, we started uh, the treatment successfully with low molecular weight heparin. First, uh, at the beginning, it was a half dose because we had a certain concern of bleeding complications with these low platelets. But uh, the dose was uh, steadily raised to a full uh, heparin dose and uh, together with a glucocorticoid uh, treatment. And then you see here in the figure the steady increase of the platelet counts together with uh, the, the decrease of the D-dimer levels. So what is the diagnosis of this entity? It's recently published as WIT, that means vaccine-induced thrombotic thrombocytopenia. Some also think that it might be linked to antibodies against platelet factor 4. However, in our patients, these antibodies were not detectable. So we think the diagnosis of WIT should be based on three columns. First, the medical history, that means a vaccination against JETOX1 in the last one to three weeks. And second, of course, uh, laboratory workup must include a finding of severe thrombocytopenia and uh, together with an elevated D-dimer level. And the clinical aspect is a thrombosis at an unusual site. This could be an abdominal vein thrombosis, a pelvic vein thrombosis, or even a cerebral vein thrombosis. So I want to summarize what uh, is the best uh, treatment options for such patients. We treated our patients initially with low molecular weight heparin and glucocorticoids, but uh, knowledge is growing very fast in this area. And as we see nowadays, uh, best treatment option would be high dose intravenous immunoglobulin, meaning one gram per kilogram body weight together with a sufficient anticoagulant treatment. This uh, could be a direct thrombin inhibitor like agatroban, having the benefit of a sh very short half life if you're concerned regarding bleeding.